Have you ever said that your body's fighting against itself? Or have you ever thought that your body's betrayed you? Chances are, if you've said those things, it may be more detrimental than you think. Or is it? Believe it or not, the evidence is, well, you'll just have to listen and find out. On today's episode, we are gonna answer the question, is it helpful or detrimental for your body to be fighting against itself? The answer is powerful. It involves that thick Velcro on boxing gloves, and I think it's gonna surprise you. So let's get started. Before I get started, I wanna take a moment to thank you for being here and to acknowledge you for taking the time to listen to the Gratitude Builds Fortitude podcast and to invest this time in yourself and your mindset. I know the journey to better health can be a struggle, and I wanna give you a shout out for taking this positive step in the right direction. My body betrayed me. My body's fighting against itself. I'm gonna fight this thing. Fight like a girl. I'm staying strong. My body hates me and I hate it back. There has been so much on my heart lately about some of these sentiments, which is why I'm sharing this episode with you today. But as I started outlining my own thought process, along with the research, well, what I found might actually surprise you. It actually surprised me. There is two sides to this story. So I'm not here to convince you that one side's any better than the other, but I do encourage you to listen with an open mind. Actually, here's what I want you to do. When you listen to this episode, you're gonna naturally gravitate to what you agree with. Your brain's gonna unconsciously and instantly go right to confirmation bias, and that's totally normal. The other thing though, is that you may have some strong feelings come up or even be a bit triggered with what you disagree with. So instead of viewing what you agree with as absolute and then completely ignoring what you disagree with, I just, I invite you to play. Just play with me, try it on for size, see how it feels. First, let's unpack this whole fight thing from a more positive perspective when it comes to a chronic health challenge or cancer or autoimmune disease. So I wanna start by sharing a story with you. Back in the day, I used to take Muay Thai classes. Now, Muay Thai, it's basically like kickboxing on steroids, and we actually boxed with each other, so there was impact. Before class, I would wrap my hands and then put my boxing gloves on. Getting the first glove on was easy. The second glove required some help because my first hand now has a glove on it, and I'd use my mouth to manipulate the Velcro. Little did I know that sound of the thick Velcro strip on the boxing glove became like Pavlov's dog, where you know it heard the bell and it would salivate because it was expecting food. Okay, the dog, not the boxing glove. But putting those boxing gloves on and hearing that Velcro, it put me in a state of mind that it was go time. It was time to box. It was time to fight. All right, so if you're watching this on YouTube, you can actually see it off on the podcast. You're just gonna be able to hear it. But you hear, so when the, the boxing glove was intact and I take the Velcro off, right? That is the noise. But then when you put the, the glove on, when you have a glove on the other hand, you gotta put the, the Velcro in your mouth and then that's how you get the glove on. All right, so if you're watching on YouTube, have a little fun with that. Okay, so fast forward 15 years when I moved, I unpacked my boxing gloves and I was like, oh, I should put them on again. Not to take Muay Thai or anything like that, but to just do some basic and easy shadow boxing moves and to move my body in a different way. When I put those gloves on and I heard that Velcro, I was instantly transported back into my old Muay Thai gym. I was ready to fight. I had the tiger playing in my head. I could literally feel my body getting amped up to box. I started that rocking motion back and forth. I could even smell the stale sweat from the gym. 15 years later, it was completely subconscious and immediate. Putting those gloves on and hearing that Velcro signal to my body that I was ready to fight. Back in 2010, when I was going through cancer treatment, I heard all of the time about how we're fighting against the cancer, fighting for our lives. If you look at the psychoneuroimmunology, which is the connection between our central nervous system, basically our brain, and the immune systems of our body, there was a 2013 study published in PubMed that showed a positive correlation between how active and collaborative a cancer patient was with their treatment team and their quality of life and success of their treatment. Stanford Medicine 
wrote an article about a cancer patient's will to live. So I'm going to actually read and share a few direct quotes from this article. And I'll have the article linked in the show notes as, as well for reference. The best thing a patient can do to strengthen the will to live is to get involved as an active participant in combating his or her disease. When patients approach their disease in an aggressive fighting posture, they're no longer helpless victims. Instead, they become active partners with their medical support team in the fight for improvement, remission, or cure. As you make the transition from helpless victim to activist, one of the most important realizations is that you have everything to do without others perceive you and treat you. And then it goes on to say, all of the ingredients in the will to live, hope is the most vital. Hope is the emotional and mental state that motivates you to keep on living, to accomplish things, and to succeed. A person who lacks hope can give up on life and lose the will to live. Without hope, there's little to live for. But with hope, a positive attitude can be maintained, determination strengthened, coping skills sharpened, and love and support more freely given and received. And then finally, the experience of cancer is not only is destructive in a physical way, but it can be a major deterrent to your fighting attitude and your will to live. But even during the roughest times, there's often untapped reserves of physical and emotional strength to call upon to help you survive one more day. These reserves can add meaning to your life, as well as serve as that lighthouse that leads you to a safe haven during the turbulent storm. And I end quote, and again, I'll leave the link to the article in the show notes that I just quoted. So, and if you're new around here and you don't know my story, I was diagnosed with breast cancer on my 39th birthday. I can't tell you how many times I thought, why on earth did my body betray me like this? Then I went through surgery, chemo, radiation. I have scars on my chest. I was missing one third of my right breast. I was bald. My fingernails were brown and dead. I smelled like chemo funk. I was in chemical menopause. And then how do I explain this? Although, okay, so my weight at the end of treatment was the same as the, at the beginning of treatment. I was 115 pounds. But during those six months of treatment, I gained and lost a total of 75 pounds. So I would gain weight and then lose weight and gain weight and then lose weight. 75 pounds gaining and losing in six months. And let me explain it to you this way. It's like this is 75 pounds out of 115. If I did the math right, that's 65% of my weight that I gained and lost in six months. So there was a huge toll on my body. There were nights that instead of sleeping, I cried through the entire night because the pain in my bones and throughout my body was so bad. I didn't know how I would have survived cancer treatment if I didn't show up every single day from a place of, I am fighting this and I am going to win. That fight, that will to live is what got me out of bed every single day. That fight, that will to live is what helped me to keep life as normal as possible during treatment. Now, my story gets very personal twice. Why did my body betray me? Why is my body fighting against itself? Why does my body hate me so much? I said these things during my breast cancer journey, but even more so when I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I said them on a daily basis. All right, let's shift gears and look at the other side of this argument. It's common lexicon to describe an autoimmune disease as the body attacking itself. Your immune system becomes either low functioning or overly active. And when the immune system is deficient, you can't ward off infections. When it's hyperactive, the body starts to attack and damage its own tissues. So let's look at Hashimoto's, which is what I have. The body produces antibodies that destroy cells that produce the thyroid hormone. So for rheumatoid arthritis, it's when the body produces antibodies that attack the joints. For multiple sclerosis, it's the nerve cells. For lupus, it can be the lungs, joints, or kidneys. So yes, technically this is correct if you wanna think of your body fighting against itself. Let's go back to a crash course on inflammation. In a nutshell, when your body is in a prolonged state of stress due to, well, pretty much anything from trauma to relationships to finances to 
being a chronic overachiever, to environmental toxins, to political events, to news and unregulated emotions, this prolonged stress causes inflammation in the body and that prolonged inflammation causes disease. And when we're in that level of prolonged stress, our nervous system is in a heightened sympathetic state. This is your fight, flight, or freeze. And when your body's in that state, it's almost impossible to heal because our body needs to be in that calm, rest and digest of the parasympathetic state to heal. Now, if you want to learn more about how all of this works and how you can reverse the cycle, I invite you to attend my free masterclass called Navigating Difficult Times. It's free to register. You can register at pinkfortitude.com slash difficult times. And the link is also in the show notes. And what happens when your body's already in the sympathetic state, your fight, flight, or freeze, it is perpetually running from the saber-toothed tiger. And then we tell ourselves things like, my body betrayed me. My body's fighting against itself. My body hates me and I hate it back. I'm fighting like a girl. I'm staying strong. I'm going to fight this thing. Is it me or do these seem like they're fighting words? And they're actually pretty aggressive if you think about it. Meaning we're throwing gasoline on a fire that's already blazing pretty strong. Our cells take in our environment. We have, what is it, 50 to 100 trillion cells, give or take. We feed each and every one of them. What we eat, what we drink, how we move our body, our words, our thoughts, our emotions. Our cells listen and respond. If we're telling ourselves every single day that our body is fighting against itself or how much our body hates us, what kind of message are we sending to ourselves? It's definitely not a kind one. There's a saying, as within, so without. There's multiple layers of meaning to it, but in a basic sense, our outside world is a reflection of our inside world. Meaning, we are what we are. Which makes me wonder, if we say these things to ourselves, our body's going to believe it and respond accordingly, which then keeps us perpetually in that sympathetic state. But what would happen if we looked at these phrases from a totally different perspective. My body betrayed me. My body's fighting against itself. My body hates me and I hate it back. What if this was your body's way of protecting you? All right, hear me out and I'm not gonna get into all of the biochemistry. Maybe I'll bring on a guest expert in a later episode for that. So hit me up on Instagram. Let me know if you wanna hear more about that. But at its core and basic function, Everything in our body was designed for a specific reason, and that's to keep us alive and to keep us safe. Our body didn't just wake up one day and decide to hate us. Our body didn't just wake up one day and say, you know what, I don't really like my person anymore. I'm going to conspire this grand plan to make their lives miserable. Our body didn't wake up one day and decide to go all gangster on us. Every single day, our bodies are trying to figure out how to keep us alive and safe all while getting bombarded with junk food and processed food and environmental toxins and overloaded stress and heavy metals and viruses and trauma and emotional dysregulation. Our body is doing the best it can to function on a daily basis, given everything we expose it to. Think of it this way. We have a choice. We can either hate our body for the disease state that it's in and complain all the time and tell ourselves on the daily how much we hate ourselves. or we can thank our body for doing the best it can to protect us. That despite everything, we are still alive and kicking, even if that doesn't look like you want it to. Or if you really want to get wild and crazy, we can even start to take personal responsibility and change how we're showing up for ourselves. Yeah, but Holly, that would require making some uncomfortable changes. All right, so now that we've flipped over both sides of this coin, what do you think? Is this language serving you and helping to create a better healing environment for your body? Or is it keeping you stuck in a state of disease? Which did you naturally agree with and which did you get a little uncomfortable with? Which one did you feel in the pit of your stomach? Hit me up on Instagram and let me know what you think. I know the topic's a bit spicy today, so I can't wait to hear from you. And regardless of what side you fall on, even if you see a little merit in both, Remember what I said earlier, even during the roughest times, there are often untapped reserves 
of physical and emotional strength to call upon to help you survive one more day. These reserves can add meaning to your life as well as serve as a lighthouse that leads you to a safe haven during the turbulent storm. This, my friend, is exactly how gratitude builds fortitude. No boxing gloves required. And if you're ready to make some changes, if you felt that tug when you were listening to this episode, if you're willing to raise your hand and say, I'm ready to do what it takes, but I need someone to help me get there, then it's time to chat and see if one-on-one coaching is the right fit for you. I'm here to be your gratitude coach and your mentor, and I'm super excited to be on this journey with you. And if any of what I said today resonates with you, if you want to find out how much gratitude and grit that you have, be sure to take the quiz. It's totally free, and you can find that at pinkfortitude.com slash quiz, and the link is also in the show notes. And when you take the quiz, you're going to receive personalized gratitude and mindset resources to help you get started to reverse the cycle of disease and take back control of your health and your life. And that's pinkfortitude.com slash quiz. So thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Gratitude Builds Fortitude. It has truly been my honor to spend this time with you and I'll see you next week.